Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a very nice game to share with you from 2004 between Alexander Morozevich on the white end and Victor Bolagon. The finish to this one is definitely one of the more memorable ones you'll find to a game. A very sharp, flashy finish to this one, to be sure. And you really wouldn't expect it given the opening Carol Khan defense. Typically, this opening leads to slower, more positional games. Um, in the early stage with this one, it does develop a bit on the slow side, but once opposite sides castles hits, uh, it's game on. There's a race, who could get it one another's king first, things will quickly sharpen from there. Now, the variation White chooses in this one, F3, the fantasy. What is one of the ideas behind this fantasy variation? Well, it's looking to combat a main idea by Black in the Carol Khan defense, or the main idea by Black in the Carol Khan, which is to say, get this guy doing something, get it outside of the pawn chain to f5 or g4, and only then play e6. With the fantasy, White is saying, you can't do that. I got these squares still covered, and if you want to activate your light square bishop, you're going to have to work a little harder. You're going to have to maybe make some concession. Black's reply to this is simply e6. He says, fine, I'm not going to try and get out along this diagonal. I'll look to develop it elsewhere, and your knight can't go to its favorite square. Okay, if Black wants to activate the light square bishop, he can. And this here is considered the main line to initiate the capture on e4 and then immediately challenge this duo with next placing an emphasis on developing the queenside minors. This is how we could see the light square bishop find a productive role. It's pinning the knight. After bishop c4, very important moment now for black, knight d7. With bishop c4, white is threatening a tactic to capture on f7, followed up with knight takes e5 check, and then queen takes bishop. So this main line goes much deeper, of course, but I wanted to at least give you a little taste of what this main line looks like. In this game, it is simply e6, and we get some more development in. Knight's out, bishop's out, Queen d3, I think a couple things when I see queen d3. One, white's just a moment away now from queenside castles. And two, there's still a delay with the king knight. White's still giving black the option to initiate this capture. This would be a bad decision by black. Because now this knight gets to make use of its favorite square. Okay, from here black goes with b6. This is black's way to activate the light square bishop, all the more appealing with the queen on a uh, queen on d3. Okay, from here the knights are now connected. Bishop a6 hits, queen e3, kingside castles for black, met with queenside castles. Okay, from here uh, play sharpens with c5, a3, and now an interesting sequence here, we're going to have a minor piece in balance. Bishop takes knight, and another bishop takes knight, followed up with, can you guess the next move? Very instructive moment right here. How would you reply as black? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, black goes with the consistent follow-up, c4. Now, on one hand, you may think to yourself, wait a second, we have opposite sides castles. Isn't the idea to open lines towards the enemy king? Yes, but I believe in this case, making a capture like this is benefiting white more than black for two reasons. One, this rook has helped on the D file. And two, more pawn exchanges generally will favor the side with the bishop pair. More pawn exchanges, more open diagonals. For the bishops. With c4, black wants to play within a closed environment. This, generally speaking, is where the knights will thrive. 
closed positions. Okay. Black has an idea on a with a pawn break. This guy right here kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. B5, A5, and B4 is a plan for Black, to be sure. Okay, where do we go from here? We have to start pushing some pawns towards the enemy king. What's the idea? At some point, create some tension with one of these guys. Right around the corner from that tension is a capture, and there you go. You'll have a file that is opened or half opened for the rooks to get at the king. All right, b5, queen e1, knight b to c6, h5, queen d7, g5, and now an instructive moment here, f6. This is considered a best move. This move takes into account a couple pawn advances by white. The reply in this game is bishop f1. If white continues in this position with h with h6, there's a couple ways black can reply to this. One is just going one step, but another is even two. This f6 move assists in g5 with tempo, with the idea to next fight over this f4 pawn break. That's one approach for black in reply to h6. What about g5? Well, in reply to g5, this is where there's tension, and this is where black can yet again say, no, I don't want a file to open up, the g file in this case. I'm going to go here and keep things still closed. And now, looking at it further, if white in this position continues with g6, that's met with h6. If white goes with h6, black's going with g6. In both cases, the G and H files remain closed, and this will buy black time to pursue an attack on the queen side. Okay, what is white's idea with underdeveloping the bishop? Well, I noted with f6 the positives, the different ways you can be reacting to the pawn play. What's a negative? Well, e6 is a hole because of this last move, the bishop wants to eye that up. He's headed for h3. White's looking to coordinate on this point. All right, from here we have rook a to d8. This isn't considered best. What's considered best is to still make use of this post on a8 with the rook. It wants to go with a5. And next, b4. See how white reacts to that and only later make a decision with the rook. This is another instructive moment right here. If a5 is played in king b1 and then b4, white would be taking this approach right here. He would be going with a4, making sure the b file does not open up. Keeping things closed. Okay. In this game, though, Rook A to D8, Black does have an idea here to have a timely capture in the center followed up with Knight takes D4. There's soon going to be three attackers on that point. Bishop H3, Pawn takes Pawn. How to recapture on E4? How would you recapture here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, the best way to recapture is with the Pawn. Were any of you tempted by this idea? My queen's on the back rank, let's recapture and develop. Don't do that. <laughs> because this guy right here, currently, in this position right here, currently a zero, let's call it. And this would be one of these zero to hero type moves. You'd be giving black. It no longer, uh, you're the pawn no longer controls d5, and this knight is now all of a sudden not just a best piece for black, but a best piece in the game. Okay, white needs to control, in other words, this second rank knight. Okay, in comes knight takes d4. White continues. This bishop now has a clear view 
of E6. Black does not want the G file to open up. There is tension here. F5, very instructive game with pawn play here. From here, King B1. There's no taking advantage of this pinned knight in this position. For instance, c3 could be met with knight b3 check, and then the queen could get out of danger. With king b1, though, now this is right around the corner. Black sniffs that out, gets off of the d-file. From here, h6. Pawn takes pawn. Queen c3. Now... This is not considered the best move. We have a case of back-to-back -back mistakes or blunders here. One by white, one by black. What is considered best in this position is the following move. And this is really, really interesting. I'll throw it to you as a pop quiz. Can you spot what is the best move here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, this here is the best move. Bishop e5. <laughs> now, in order to play that move, you have to foresee a queen sacrifice. Now, bishop e5, for instance, knight c3, what are you doing here? Seems like you're running into a fork. And black is winning, black is not winning. Because white could play queen takes e4. What's happening here? Well, after queen takes queen, look at these monster bishops. Check. King here. How's that for me? Okay, so this is really an overwhelming attack here. White has a lot of pieces. These two bishops. This potential opening up of the h-file. A pawn could take away all the squares from the king. You don't need a queen in this position as white. No bishop e5 in this game. Queen c3. This knight can't go wherever he wants. We have a mate, possibly, on g7. In this game, e3 is played. This is a blunder. From this point on, white is winning. What is considered best withdrawing this knight? Blunting this diagonal. Shielding uh, the bishop. It's no longer eyeing e6 directly. And at the same time, welcoming more exchanges. Black is the side who is under pressure. Black is the side who's on the defensive. What's a way to ease this defensive task? Welcome exchanges. We have the rooks now in tension. This is considered best. Also worth noting, the knight is defending against the mate threat on g7. All right. In this game, black advances the passed pawn. Rook takes knight follows. This is giving up the rook in the corner. Queen takes rook. White has this calculated after king a2. Now what do you do? Black continues in the best way. Queen takes bishop, but this is still completely winning for white. Because after rook takes rook, you don't have time to take back. Queen takes g7 would be mate. In this game, black captures on h6. If the knight goes to f5 in this position, this is how white could reply. Queen e5. And after rook takes rook, queen takes pawn, not only check, but pinning the knight. Doesn't matter where the king goes. Next up, there's pawn takes pawn. The knight cannot take because the queen would fall. At the end of all this, eventually, this rook falls, and we get to a position like this where the bishop gets to go here with check. If you're not, if you're not capturing the bishop in this position, you're going to get mated. So you're going to end up losing the queen. King g7 in this position, we would have mate on f8. In short, if knight f5, queen e5 is an excellent way to follow up. In this game, it is simply g takes h6, g takes h6. We have a mate threat on g7. Black defends that. We're one move away 
from Black resigning. Can you spot the final move of this game? Feel free to pause the video. All right, here we go. As mentioned, a very flashy, sharp, memorable finish to this one. Queen H8. Black resigns. <laughs> How valuable is this pawn? Pretty valuable. Uh, it's not a one-point pawn. It's, it feels more like it's a major piece. It's setting up a beautiful mating net. What are black's options if the game continued from here? If the king goes to f7, it's a mate in two. With queen takes h7 check, queen blocks, you simply take the queen. If the king steps up, rook takes rook is mate. And the other way is to take the queen. This is going to lead to mate in a very pretty way. Rook takes rook, two ways to block. If you block with the queen, this is mate straight away. And if you block with the knight, we would have bishop here again. And I don't know, what would be your way to deliver mate in this position? For me, I'm going with the pawn. How's that for a pretty finish? <laughs> okay, anyhow, after this final move, queen h8, black resigns in this one. Anyhow, feel free as usual to leave any feedback to this video in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.